Hello and welcome to a slightly different version or different video. Uh, there is a new version out of uh, a better route planner. It's version 4 and it has some new features uh, as well as um, some new things that I'm not so happy about. Uh, it also has a, a premium version. So I've been mucking around with this for two days now just to try and get it working. Apparently uh, it doesn't seem to be made for Firefox at all. So I've installed Chromium <laughs> to, to be able to use it properly. Um, so some of the things that we can see here, I'll just run through the settings quickly. So I have my, uh, what's new in this version is you can have more than one car. So I have now added both my Tesla Model X and my e -up. And as you can see in Chromium, I can clearly see the units of the different uh, variables here. But if I go to Firefox, it's all messed up. It's the same way in Windows as well. So I hope the developers will fix this because I don't really use Chrome or Chromium. I uh, exclusively, exclusively, uh, that's a <laughs> tongue full, exclusively use uh, Firefox. So, but I'll use Chromium today just to see this, uh, how it works. Uh, first of all, you can have multiple cars. You can still link your car or at least the Tesla as you used to be able to before. So you can have live state of charge, calibrated reference consumption, weather and traffic. And it will pull the state of charge from the car. It will also use live reference consumption, which means that it will be uh, almost like Tesla Fi. It will uh, read data from your car and calculate consumption for you. And I've seen in the past, my car is actually using slightly less than the 220 watt hours per kilometer that's default for the Model X Raven. So this is kind of nice. It will be a bit more accurate. Uh, it doesn't have that much new in the battery and charging sections. Um, it has charger availability, so it can forecast if a charger is very busy or not on a specific day, which might be useful, uh, at least if you don't plan to charge on the Tesla supercharger network. <laughs> Um, so for uh, uh, other new stuff is, um, let's see, speed, yeah, it has real-time traffic. Oh, that's a bit, I usually have this on 105. I don't drive that fast usually. Uh, also for road conditions, instead of using like windy, you can turn it off and you can see, you can, before you could input head or tailwind, you can still can and uh, what kilometers per second i thought that was meters per second in firefox because you can't see the uh, unit there uh, anyway uh, normal is to use uh, meter per second but you can not now turn on real-time weather and it should calculate based on the actual conditions which is nice and this is new this is also part of the premium version which costs five euros a month the same goes for real-time traffic um, and also for, for the charging availability. I think that's all you get from the five euros a month, except that you can now save multiple cars. So I'm just going to show a quick um, plan. I'll just have er everything on automatic. Road conditions, yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to plan a route. So just let me input the data here. Uh, it doesn't allow you to remove history, so I don't want my whole history to display here. So be back in a second. So I added a route from where I live or close to where I live uh, and to Tonheim, Tonheim. <laughs> uh, which is a route I've done a few times. So I kind of know how the charging goes. Usually when I drive somewhere, I just use this as a reference uh, and then I might adjust it underway. So now I can just press plan route. 
takes a bit of time, usually. Not this much time. Oh, there we go. And you can see the route. It wants to charge for how much? Two charges, 38 minutes in total. Uh, 543 kilometers. That's when I start with 77% state of charge. This is a bit confusing to me, even though it says how busy the chargers are and how much you need to charge and stuff. So this is pretty nice. It's a bit high state of charge to charge at Elvum, but the next one is actually Alda. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, this is correct. I was thinking, why is it going through the mountains, but it's not. It takes one hour more, that's quite a bit. And here you can see the real-time traffic. So what I prefer is this view. It's a table view, which is much nicer. It just lays it out, for me at least, much clearer. I'm not that big a fan of the app type view that we have here. So that's basically it for a Tesla. Uh, let's have a look at how the e app is. Then I need to go back, I need to go to the settings, and change the model to the e-up. I'll start at, uh, for the e-up, I'll start at 100%. Now, this is buggy sometimes. Now it will display... Yeah, it is still buggy in... I thought this was a Firefox bug, but it seems that this is... Um, with the software itself. At 110, the reference consumption is 161. I remember that myself, <laughs> but yeah, it should, should have that by default when you switch the car. Another thing that I would like is that when you switch car, it should add or remember the battery degradation. So my EAP is from 2015, it has 10% battery degradation. Or approximately. I'm, I haven't done a very accurate job of calculating it. So the EAP should, yeah, it did input the correct max speed, <laughs> even though I'm never going to go that fast in Norway. And now I get also road conditions and things like that. So you can see it added a lot of chargers, uh, because now I have um, CCS here instead of supercharger. I could input CCS for my Model X as well, but I prefer charging on Tesla chargers. It's much cheaper than the other ones and it just works. But for the EAP, I might have to use some other stuff like 50 kilowatt. <laughs> well, yeah. What is this? It doesn't have. 50 kilowatt CCS. Well, anyway, uh, for this car, I'm. Well, I could do the same route, couldn't I? Just to see how bad it was. <laughs> Let's see, with the E up. How long will it take? It's gonna need more time. I'm not sure if it can even make it. There are some chargers on the way. Uh, it takes some time. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it can. Uh, except for the last route, it needs to go slower. How much slower? Does it say that? No, it doesn't. Does that mean it can't make it? No, it says it can make it in 13% state of charge. Odd. 63. Well, that's only slightly slower than the speed limit at this spot. Let's see. 84. Well, that's about 5%, isn't it? 
I wonder why that line is red. That's a bit scary. It needs to charge almost one and a half hours more than the Tesla. So instead of seven hours something, it takes nine hours, 40 minutes. But it seems like it's doable. There's even a charger here. Yeah, that would be no wish. No, that's... Did I see a charger on this route? Yeah, here's one. Come on. Doesn't want to click it. <laughs> Clet, there's the supercharger at that spot. Oh, it did click it. I just got confused. Yeah. All right. But if you don't like this interface or this new version, there's always another option. You can go here and just type classic. <laughs> so it has a new version, it says. But now we get, yeah, okay. Ah, that's the trouble. It arrives there at 3% state of charge. Okay, let's plan it and see how it looks here, because this is an interface I'm much more used to. This has all my settings, right? Oh. Oh yeah, it's raining and snowing up there now. No. <laughs> let's plan it. I'm just curious to see. Now it doesn't display anything bad here. That's strange. I think it might have been because of the weather. Uh, it used real-time weather, so... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's the old version, which I find the interface in the old version is much more cleaner, much easier to read, and easier to fix, at least on a computer. It might be different on a mobile phone, but I don't really use my mobile phone for things like that. I prefer planning on the computer, save the trip, and then I can open it on the mobile. But I think that's it for this episode. So until next time, bye bye.